Hello dear students, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to this playlist in which we are discussing about Corona, Over Voltage and Transient in Power System in detail. We have discussed about Corona and Over Voltage in Power Systems in detail in previous videos and uh, recently we have started discussing about the transients in the power system and how it can affect our power system. In previous class we saw uh, what happens when you uh, see or when uh, transient gets applied on simple RL circuit and then we saw what happens when an alternator goes through a short circuit certain short circuit condition we analyze the whole uh, phenomena and then we talked about the restriking voltage after removing uh, removal of a short circuit. Now today we are going to discuss about the arcing grounds. So uh, if you haven't checked out previous videos please click on the top right hand side the corner of your screen in the i button. The link will be flashing up previous video so if you are well aware of previous video then it will be better for you because you will be able to grasp today's concept even in better way. So now that's out of the way, let's get started with arcing grounds. So uh, before we talk about particularly arcing ground, first thing I want to discuss about, see this circuit. This is a three phase isolated neutral system under uh, you can say healthy operating conditions. Okay. Now there's one thing to know that when fault current involving arc path uh, genera gets generated it will produce very high transient voltages and in the isolated neutral system during a single line to ground fault an intermittent arcing, arcing may take place and this phenomena of uh, intermittent arcing is basically called arcing ground Right. So uh, see the figure now. Every single uh, line conductor has the same capacitance to the ground as the line are transposed with each other. Right. See. Now under the healthy operating conditions, three capacitance, uh, three capacitance currents are equal and will be imbalanced. Correct. But now let's consider the faulty condition. So let's say uh, we have single line to ground fault taking place on my line A. It will short circuit the capacitance of line A and the voltage of the phase will become zero. Agreed? The potential of this healthy phase is will increase the uh, will increase till some certain value which will be equal to the value of the line to line voltages and these currents which are flowing from these healthy phases to ground is normally uh, you know what is what is the value of it right it's equal to root 3 times the previous current now these currents have a different phase relationship c see here these currents are having different phase relationships how so see V A is here but see I A is here so voltage and current are pretty much far apart from each other uh, close to 90 degrees you can say but in negative now if I A is here then I B will be here of course and I C will be here whereas V A is here V B is here and V C is here right so basically it is totally different from the first one right current is totally different from the voltage so they share very different phase relationship and uh, these currents will return through the uh, fault and will be sufficient to support the arc and in this way the arcing ground will be established and because of that what happens the flashover will take place in the insulator which is very dangerous if the arc will appear across the circuit breaker 
so what the system will try the system will try to come to its balanced condition if the arc is momentarily interrupted at a current zero and at that moment of arc extinguishing ca will be discharged okay ca will be discharged but other two c fault is occurring at a so ca is getting discharged but other two cb and cc will have considerable voltage across them right now the charges of these capacitor will remain trapped and this voltage will superimpose the power frequency voltage variations there will be so many variations and as the circuit has inherent inductance the changes in the voltage across the capacitance are oscillatory uh, will be in oscillatory nature so this will cause the arc to restrike and it will cause the further transient disturbances now due to the trouble of the arcing grounds power system are rarely operated with insulated neutral you uh, will not see any power system operating with insulated neutral nowadays we all have neutrals grounded completely right and why do we do that so we do this to overcome such troubles uh like problems just uh, such like this we just talked about so neutral is not uh, grounded solidly through the resistance or uh, reactances in some cases so we ground the neutral just to get rid of this and also you can see the phasor diagram because see uh i a i b i c and v a v b v c were very different so you can see phase in phasor diagram as well this is v c this is v b v a the fault is occurring at v a so v a will be zero so because it is short circuit here is your fault current i f here is your i b now connecting them we will have v g c right here is your i c so and see this one we are grounding a neutral right sorry this was neutral not uh, i see this was neutral we are grounding it now let's discuss about capacitance switching so uh, in power system we all have uh, uh, noticed that a hazardous condition will occur when capacitor bank is connected to a uh, long transmission line it get, is gets disconnected right now let's consider power system okay let's consider the power system shown in this figure simple basic right we are having a, a voltage source e and uh, l is the source inductance c is the capacitor band connected to the system through my s switch now let's consider that the switch as interrupts the capacitor current at some instant a and at this instant the capacitor is charged to its maximum value okay what is the maximum value let's say it is em and as the capacitor is isolated from the source it will retain this charge okay because it it is got it got isolated from its source it will retain its charge it will have no other way to discharge so it will retain its charge now at some instant b like a one half cycle little later this is the instant a this is the uh, one half cycle this is basically the one half cycle so instant a and one half cycle later so this is instant b after one half cycle the voltage across the switch will reach a peak value of 2em right it will reach at 2em now this voltage will reignite the arc and it will cause oscillatory transients and that you can see here see oscillatory transients now after uh, uh, resignation of the current in the circuit we can find the value of current and that current ie will be given by minus 2 em divided by root l by c sin t divided by root lc so the transient voltage across the capacitor can be given using this formula minus 2 em 1 minus cos t divided by root lc 
and it is a high high frequency transient voltages right so what is basically the total voltage across the capacitor it, uh, it is basically the sum of initial voltage across the capacitor and the high frequency transient voltages right see initial voltage across capacitor this plus the uh, the high frequency transient voltages correct now how far it can increase so it can increase up to maximum value of minus 3 em as you can see here it is going till minus 3 em here and interruption of circuit or second uh, restrike can also cause value of uh, value of my uh, value of my current still higher right sorry value of my voltage still higher it is em now uh, there is a topic called current chopping so what is current chopping from the name you might have uh, some idea it is basically the phenomena of current interruption before uh, natural current reaches zero value so this will occur mainly in the air blast circuit breaker because uh, this air blast circuit breaker retains some uh, retains the same uh, extinguishing power irrespective of the magnitude of the current to be interrupted right and when interrupting low inductive current like magnetizing current of transformer a rapid deionizing effect will cause the current to fall to its zero value before natural current z uh, natural current and natural current uh, reaches zero value and this phenomena is called current chopping right let me repeat again when interrupting low inductive current like uh, uh, magnetizing current of my transformer or a rapid deionizing effect causes the current to fall to its zero value before my natural current hits zero value then that phenomena is called current chopping now uh, to understand it better see the first image this image in which what do we have you can see uh, basically you can see an arc definitely you can see circuit breaker you can definitely see an arc right so current at uh, some point a when chopping is done like uh, uh, when chopping is done basically means it uh, reaches the value zero so energy stored in that inductance this inductance so energy uh, stored in this inductance what will be the value of it of course one half li square so that much of value one half li square will be transferred to the capacitor which will charges it later to some voltages now these voltages this voltage is very high such a transient voltage and this high voltage causes the restriking of arc before the voltage reaches its maximum value so restriking of an arc draws energy from capacitor and so voltage across the capacitor will keep decreasing right it will keep decreasing to the point to which this restriking voltage will rise on uh, the rise of this restriking voltage will depend on rrrv and if it is less than the time taken to reach maximum value is more and uh, deionizing effect will be more in uh, uh, dominance you can say so uh, the deionizing effect which uh, which is still in action will produce the second current chop and this value of the current will be smaller than the previous one right now uh, again the restriking voltage will build up and will have some high rrrv which will appear across the contacts and uh, it will appear across the contacts unless the arc continues right and if arc restrikes further the several chops may occur before the final interruption of the current and circuit breaker may fail to the uh, to clear the fault and you know what happens when circuit breaker fails to clear the fault right if restriking does not occur very high voltage appears across the contacts and it will fail your system it will damage your equipment so uh, that was the current chopping 
now traveling waves on transmission line that uh, one more topic which I have interest to discuss in so uh, what are the different uh, methods to represent a long transmission line if you have studied rigorous method we can represent a long transmission line using nominal pi and nominal t method so most of the times we use nominal pi method so you can see here in this image we have represented long transmission line by nominal pi circuit uh, it is distributed with uh, l and c parameters inductors and capacitor as you can see in this image now the circuit has ability to support of traveling waves vol uh, tra traveling waves voltages and currents right so this circuit has the ability to support of traveling waves voltages and currents and it has a finite velocity of electromagnetic field propagation and in such a circuit uh, any kind of changes in the current and voltages owing to lightning and switching do not appear simultaneously in all the parts of the circuit but will spread out in the form of traveling waves or surges so uh, it takes an instant to switch uh, switch as to uh, switch the mode like from on to off or on right and at this instant the complete line is not energized instantly but it takes some finite number uh, finite amount of time to reach that voltage or current at the far end right we are using this uh, switch s so to reach the far end it will take some amount of time at this in instant the inductance which we have represented using uh, cum cumulatively we have represented uh, inductance using uh, sin l it will act as an open circuit and definitely the capacitor will uh, act as a closed circuit right or short circuit but next section are uncharged as voltage across c1 is zero and in that fraction of a, a fraction amount of time the c1 is charged to some value and the chain will start charging c2 c3 c4 and so on and gradually the whole line will get charged so this gradual build up of my voltage over a transmission line it conducts uh, transmission line conductors can be regarded as the voltage wave travel uh, traveling one to one another right and this gradual charging of capacitance is due to associated current waves so current wave which is accompanied by a voltage wave set up a magnetic field in the surrounding space and reflection and refraction of these surges will be produced at junction and the terminal in the line and about these uh, refraction and deflections we are going to discuss about them in, in detail as well but before them before that I want to discuss about wave equation because uh, without uh, knowledge of wave in equation and the sp uh, uh, different specifications of these traveling waves we will, we will not be able to discuss about it so first let's discuss about wave equation and then later on we will move to that uh, refraction and reflection part right so initially what they've done they have uh, basically derived the different relations on basic terms so we all know what is the surge impedance right under root l by c so uh, there is no need to uh, define the whole term one more time just understand that surge impedance is under root l by c you all must have studied that in previous semesters now uh, the velocity of propagation now they have given uh, some values here and some uh, uh, abbreviations just to make it clear what uh, this sign represents right like v represents the velocity of propagation which is basically 3 into 10 to 8 meter per second basically it is uh, uh, it is showing the speed of light right velocity of propagation is basically speed of light now l is the in inductance per per meter length of line and of course the unit of inductor is henry Capacitance C is represents capacitance and C is uh, stand uh, C stands for the capacitance of line per unit length of line. Of course, it is in Faraday. 
e is the voltage across the length i is the current in my line small v again is the velocity of propagation they have, um, they, give, they have given it one more time in meter per second of course speed of light basically epsilon 0 is the permittivity of air which is 1 by 36 pi into 10 to minus 9 constant value and er is the relative permittivity and the value of relative permittivity is always 1 now let's represent the line and switch to energize the line when it is switch is turned on okay so here we are turning the switch on what we will do initially we will take small length of line let's call it del x as you can see here and a small time interval we will call the time interval delta x all right small length of line del x small length, uh, length of time interval delta t and current i and voltage e will along the length will be produced now we all know current will produce magnetic flux right and emf will be generated i don't have to explain the faraday's uh, faraday's law one more time right so for based on faraday's law emf will be generated and it will balance the e in the length of and the in the entire length of the line now how much in value will be there of the inductance in that uh, uh, short amount of length of line del x right to find it out we just have to multiply my inductance with del x and uh, uh, in order to find how much flux will be built up we basically multiply with uh, current with that uh, much amount of inductance right for that uh, particular area or for that particular length of line so the flux build up will be i into l into dx and uh, we all know what is the uh, formula of inductance n pi divided by i and we all know n is 1 because it is a transmission line it's not a transformer so l will be n pi divided by i you, you have the value of phi you have the value of i now based on that you can say phi will be equal to i into l because n is 1 so phi will be i into l correct now this rate of uh, uh, built of flux will give the rise to my back emf and with this base uh, we can prove the surge impedance value which means uh, z will be equal to under root l by c and the speed of light v equal to 3 into 10 to 8 meter per second now uh, we know that uh, the value of uh, uh, the value of L right you know the value of I now what will be the value of E so it will be basically the uh, value of I into value of whatever impedance present over there so impedance L will be impedance uh, there will be reactance no impedance so the reactance into del x divided by del t for that particular amount of line and for that particular time interval right so you can give it using I L V basically because remember what is uh, uh, dx by dt it is velocity right distance divided by time is basically velocity so it will be v and because it is a wave and it travels with the same uh, speed as the light travels so you can represent it using small v the propagation of light constant right now the current i it will carry the uh, charge i into del t in uh, that small amount of time uh, time interval given and this charge will remain on the line to to charge it upon the potential of e and since the capacitance of uh, length del x of my line is c into del x because c is the capacitance of the line per unit length and uh, we just have to multiply it with uh, del x just like we did in the inductance we uh, come to c into del x and its charge will be e into c into del x right so from that we come here i into del t will be equal to e c into del x and making i the subject the formula will be ec divided by del x by del t 
now again you know what is the value of del x by del t it is small v so ec into v will be my current now uh, when switching on emf on the line um, now we already got the relation between v and i okay now what if we divide both of these which means why don't we divide e by uh, e by i yes right so when we do it that v we will get cancelled and we will be left with i by e into l by c and uh, taking square on the both the uh, on both the sides what you will get e square into i uh, e square divided by i square will be equal to uh, l divided by c right or basically you can send uh, one e on the other side and one l on the other side and you will be left with l by c as well so uh, in the end what you will get you will get the formula of the surge impedance e by i equal to l by c or you can also call it natural impedance so for that is that n so basically uh, natural impedance or surge impedance is the ratio of the voltage to current giving rise to my impedance and this impedance is also often called uh, surge impedance or natural impedance ju just as i stated a few minutes ago and the value of this uh, natural impedance will be dependent on line constant right then they have shown that for uh, underground cables it can be from 40 ohm to 60 ohms and for overhead lines it, it can go from 400 ohms to 600 ohms now to derive the relation of velocity propagation or the v and we are going to use this formula as well right under root l, uh, l by c as well so we know e uh, first we what did we do we took the ratio of e and i now what we will do we will take the multiplication of e and i so by taking multiplication e into i will be i l into v into e c into v right so will be e i l c into v square now what we will do we will make v square the subject e and i will get cancelled on the east side and we will have v square equal to 1 by lc and v will be under root 1 by lc right which means e by i equal to 1 by lc equal to v correct now just substitute the value of l and c in overhead line we know what is the um, uh, what is the value of uh, l in the overhead line right 2 into 10 raised to minus 7 log d by r and value of c so 2 pi epsilon 0 epsilon r divided by log d by r base e now uh, we know that for overhead line the inductance uh, value of the inductance is uh, 2 into 10 raised to minus 7 henry's 2 into minus 7 log d by r base e henry per meters and when you calculate because you know the value of epsilon 0 you know the value of epsilon r and you are also aware of the value of d and r as well so by calculating that you will come to know that the value of capacitance will be 3 uh, into 10 raised to uh, sorry the whole value of the whole term will be 3 into 10 raised to 8 meter per second right so the velocity of propagation voltage uh, sorry velocity of propagation v will be equal to 3 into 10 raised to 8 this is the same for overhead line as l and c is same for all the lines and this value v is same as the speed of light v so in actual case when resistance is also considered along with uh, l and c the v will be uh, will get uh, distorted it will be lesser by 5 to 10 percent and then the uh, derived value of v will be uh, 285 meter per microsecond now in comparison with overhead line in case of uh, cables the value of v should be much less because of um, the relative permittivity of air right the relative permittivity of air equal to 1 so that uh, factor of 10 raised to minus 9 gets uh, cancelled out and because of that it will be much less and for soil it will be great uh, the value of uh, relative permitting will be even greater than 1 so it will be even smaller in that case and that is why the dielectric constant see so epsilon r varies between 2.5 to 4 for cables for underground cables 
and so this v will vary for accordingly uh, as the epsilon r varies right now let's talk about the shape and specification of uh, uh, traveling wave so see this one in the figure 9.1 uh, or in this figure in general they have shown the wave for uh, waveform for uh, high initial rate of rising okay and the second one in this one you can see this one is uh, uh, more close to the y axis initially and it is far from y axis initially right so in the second one you can see the waveform of slow initial rate right so slow initial rate of rise of a long toe right it looks like a long toe so uh, now let's discuss both of them first let me uh, describe the wave shape for the specifics like uh, uh, as you can see this have the crest it has the front it has the tail right it has some front it has some tail it has crest so first let's discuss about the crest so it is expressed in kv or uh, kilo ampere and it is the maximum amplitude of my wave which is one in this case as you can see this is known as front this portion and it is expressed in the millisecond or in microseconds the front of the wave is in the portion of the wave before the crest right which means this whole portion the second one the front will be this long portion so uh, and the time which measured from the beginning up to the crest which means from the start to the crest the whole portion will be front so see in this second figure the initial uh, slow initial rate virtual front is considered which is determined by the straight line between 30% and 90% points right it is almost a straight line as you can see around 30 to 90% and in virtual front uh, the virtual front is 1 into 667 into t1 the extension of this, this straight line to x axis will give zero right which means virtual zero not exact zero virtual zero then we have the tail the uh, final portion it's called tail as you can see here this one is the tail this one this is the tail so it is expressed in the microseconds again but tail is quite longer than the front see in both the cases tail is longer than the front and this is the portion of the wave beyond the crest so the time is measured from beginning of uh, wave up to the wave redu uh, wave reduction to 50% of its values uh, values at crest so from this to this point uh, from 1 to point 0.5 this portion is known as tail right and in the second one as well from here to here right from 1 to point 0.5 this portion is known as tail so uh, in the first one uh, slow, in, uh, slow initial rate of long toe type it is having tail time which is uh, measured from 0 uh, to 50 percent value on tails and the second one it is a little bit different right the slope is a little different but not so much different almost then the polarity uh, it polarity is the polarity of crest voltage or current the way in which it is expressed would be plus 100 or 1 or plus 25 it can be anything and in the expression uh, in which the first one would be 500 kV this one in this expression of the first one uh, first image it would be around 500 kV and in the second one 1 microsecond for front and the th in the third uh, uh, it stands for tail of 25 microsecond around 25 long enough right 
so uh, that was your uh, shape and specification of traveling wave so i think uh, this lecture has been extended quite enough so we'll discuss about the re reflection and refraction at junction about uh, uh, reflection and refraction at junction in upcoming class we will wrap this class here and uh, i will be seeing you next time with a uh, reflection and refraction discussion so if you have any doubts queries or any feedback related uh, to the channel or doubts and queries related to the lecture please feel free to mention them in the comment section below i will try to answer them as soon as possible and as many as possible so we will ending this class here uh, i will be seeing you next time until then take care of yourselves and thank you very much for listening goodbye for now